are familiar with ultrasonic echo sounding for mapping the bed of the ocean, for submarine detection, and for finding flaws in metal structures. When an ultrasonic beam in its passage through metal, for example, encounters a flaw, a blip can be made to appear on a cathode ray tube. This drawing, taken from the tube face, shows the propagating source on the left and the blip to the right. Ultrasonic energy is vibrational energy of very high frequency above the range of hearing. Because of this, it can be propagated and reflected as a beam. Unfortunately, the human body has a great profusion of reflecting interfaces, and echoes get scattered at random. For an echo to return to the probe, the ultrasonic beam must strike the reflecting surface at right angles. Otherwise, the echo will be lost to the probe. Our ultrasonograms are filed in this manner, and here we see the records which we obtained from the patient we are about to demonstrate. Tumor more than halfway up to the umbilicus from the pelvis. There are associated ascites, and on by manual examination, the uterus would appear to be displaced to the right and behind the tumor, which is not wholly fixed. The diagnosis is probably that of ovarian cyst, but the patient is Virgo intacta, and it is not easy to be certain. This shows the automatic scanner operating in longitudinal section. Note how it follows the contours of the body surface. This diagram shows how the picture is being built up during scanning. The completed ultrasonogram of this case in transverse section shows the position of the probe rocking over the surface and below a transonic fluid containing tumor, revealing its dimensions and its posterior wall. We will now turn to measurement in utero of the fetal biparietal diameter. This is the apparatus. It is normally out of scanning range. The technique is simple and takes only a few minutes. This method is also applicable to cases of malpresentation, provided the biparietal diameter is carefully identified by this technique. Again, acoustic coupling is achieved by smearing the abdominal wall with olive oil, and a double probe then searches for the biparietal diameter in the region of the parietal eminence, which can be palpated easily when the head is not engaged. This diameter is recognized by the simultaneous recording of large echoes from the near and far walls of the fetal skull. The posterior uterine wall may sharp as well. This apparatus is a prototype, but with further refinement it is hoped that sonar will provide an additional aid to diagnosis.